All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by David Delaney, who is up the coast in San Francisco. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And uh, David is the founder of Tenbound, a research and advisory firm focused and dedicated 100% on sales development. And today we're going to talk about your book, The Sales Development Framework, How to Build and Scale a Highly Productive Sales Development Program. So, um, David, let, let's start off just by kind of baselining a little bit. Uh, when you mean sales, just, just define sales development for the audience. Yeah, you know, the, there's a lot of different terms going around. So we, yeah. we define it as the sales development rep, the SDR, BDR right. world. So the folks that are in charge of outbound prospecting and following up on inbound leads to create sales pipeline. So that's, and I know that it sometimes gets mixed up with business development, which could be what we're talking about today, but could also be, you know, partnerships between companies. Yeah. And so you you divided up uh, your program up into three key areas of, of people process and your tech stack. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start off, though. Let's start off with people, because, I mean, this role, like whether it's business development, rep, SDR, whatever, whatever you call it at, uh, at a particular company, it requires a certain skill set to be successful. It does. Yeah. You know, and, and we couldn't find anything, you know, in the market that really focused in on, on the people component, especially, um, you know, when, when people start sales development programs, they go straight to the tech, right? Because mm -hmm. there's so much amazing technology, like what, what you guys are doing, you know, out there. And it seems like you just plug in, you know, a few tools, hire some people and off to the races. Right. So, do, do your best out there. So we, we, we focus in on, wait a minute, let's just take a step back and start to think about, you know, what kind of culture do you want to put together on the team? And how, do, how does that translate into the people that you hire and the recruiting process and the training and coaching? And a lot of that is missing right now in the sales development world. And, it, it, you know, you see the results. Um, you know, there's some crazy stats out there on, on how successful SDR teams actually are. Um, so we're, we're trying to get ahead of that with this. No, I think I think it's great because I think a lot of people, uh, you know, go obviously go into an SDR job looking for a stepping stone, maybe into an outside sales job or an enterprise sales job or whatever it is. Um, so I think maybe sometimes companies don't put as much effort into figuring out the right people to, you know, find the right person for the right job as opposed to find somebody who will do the job. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, the, the pattern that we see and especially like Silicon Valley SaaS companies, they got some, some traction and some investment is, okay, we need to hire, you know, hire people. And one of the first things that we need is sales pipeline as quickly as possible. So let's, uh, let's spin up a team. Let's, you know, hire five or six people, get them in here and uh, go, go for it. Right. And, and uh, you know, there's not a lot of emphasis on the, the screening process and making sure that this is something that people actually want to do. And there's also that sort of carrot that's all, always dangled in, in the recruiting process of, hey, you know, just come in, be an SDR for 18 months, and then you'll be promoted to something bigger and better. And, uh, you know, it it's causes a lot of issues, you know, in, in, in the way that teams are run and, and the success metrics that they're able to produce. So, um, so from the work you've done and writing, and writing the book, um, what is it, that, what do you think in terms of what the, what the ideal skill sets or traits are for an SDR and what, are, and what should people be training them on? Yeah, I mean, well, first and foremost, it's take the take the role seriously in your organization. Um, really, you know, at that the highest level, the top performing sales development programs have executive support and executive sponsorship and executive interest. You know, mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's that's where it starts. Um, just the you know uh, the idea that this is an important position 
Um, it's not a transitory, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, entry level type of position. This is a critical position to the success yeah. of our sales and, and marketing efforts. And, and so first and foremost, taking it really seriously, who, who we want on the team is really, is there, is there a track record of, of success in, in sales? And that's even if it's, you know, selling Girl Scout cookies or, <laughs> you know, Cutco knives or, or something like that. Have you any experience in sales and, and were you successful? You know, that, that's a, um, you know, first and foremost, something to look for. Even if someone's just coming out of college, there's plenty of opportunities to get involved. Um, you know, mm-hmm. even if you're not in the, in the corporate world. So do they have an interest in sales? Are they looking to get into this, you know, profession? And then also the, the, um, the, the, the care and, and preparation and, and research that they do on the company and, um, you know, on the um, opportunity that you're presenting. Uh, have they really thought through that? Do they know who you are and what you're doing, you know? And you can usually pick that up within five minutes of the interview, uh, because a, a lot of the job involves heavy research and, and um, you know, searching for contact information and things like that. So you want to make sure that it's somebody that cares enough to, to do that and they're not just winging it. Yeah, no, and I would say, I mean, obviously, if you're interviewing them, the, the first interview, whether it's on the phone or on Zoom or whatever, um, you know, they would obviously need to be impressive because that's what they're going to be doing, right? <laughs> they're going to be trying to make first impressions, really good first impressions. Um, yeah, but just so coming back, you have just, five seconds, really. I mean, you've less yeah. than five seconds these days, right? Uh, when you're yeah. making your first impression. And so if you don't blow me away, and and especially if you don't know anything about my company or me or what we're doing, uh, you know, that I picked that up, you know, in the first five seconds and uh, I, I, there's no excuse uh, and, and they're not going to do well, you know, if they can't articulate that in the interview. Yeah. And just coming back, I, I just want to underline what you said earlier about uh, taking the, the role seriously, because you're right, because then many times you'll see people look at, well, the SDR is kind of the lowest on the totem pole. It's it's, it's uh, rather than looking at it as this is an essential and critical part. And this is a job that to be. But let's be honest, David, I mean, when you find somebody who's really good at this job, I mean, that's like that's finding a diamond. Oh, yeah, I mean, and, you know, there's a the couple of interesting things there. If you look at the super successful sales development organizations in the tech industry, and we, we really only work with companies in the tech industry. Mm-hmm. It comes from the top. There, there's a there's a, an acknowledgement first and foremost that there is a sales development program at the company, you know, from the highest levels, and it's it, there's a lot of training, there's a lot of support, there's there's just um, you know a, a seriousness to the craft that is missing, you know, when you see a basket case sales development program, and um, you know the 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 other quick thing is that uh, you know they they have a very strict recruiting process, just like we're talking about. It's hard to get in and it's hard to do, you know, to, to get into the company as a sales development rep. And so you, you get a higher level, uh, you know, uh, caliber person on the team. And to your point, you know, there's a lot of bias against um, the lifer SDR, you know, or somebody who has been an SDR for a long time, but we try to dispel that myth whenever we hear it because you know, we're running a business here and we need predictable, steady pipeline month after month. We need appointments for the sales team. So why would I not want someone in there month after month who has a great attitude, who just wants to do this particular job and uh, is a real additive to the team? Um, I would never want to let them go if they want to do that. Now, obviously, if they want to get out of the position in 18 months and become a sales rep, you know, sure, we'll support that as well. But uh, I've got nothing against the life or SDR. No, I mean, I think the SDR is a tip of the spear and you'd want the tip of the spear to be as sharp as possible. So um, it makes no sense. The other thing that's, let's move on because one of the other things I think that's really important is, and I think this is sales in general, not just uh, SDR uh, area is process. So you have people process and technology process is, I think in many ways, sales is often late, um, slow to process, slow to develop good processes, slow to adopt good processes, because there's still that kind of hangover of, 
well, process belongs to other people. Like sales is a bit of a wild west. Um, yeah. But in in today's world, I mean, especially with digital transformation, I mean, process is absolutely critical. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, it's an art and a science, really, of sales development. And as salespeople, you know, we're a lot of it is artistry, right? It's the black magic of sales. You know, it doesn't really translate necessarily to the hard, boring work of putting a process together. But there's got to be some kind of process because. Um, sales development really at its core is project management. And yep. when I say that, it's, it's a continuous A-B testing and trying to understand what the messaging it, uh, is that's actually resonating in the market and getting some kind of response. Um, and so if you think about it, if you're trying to set up a, a project, you need to have milestones, deadlines, you, you need to have a project owner and you need to continuously report on the success and, and failure of the experiments. And so if you've got, you know, a, a salesperson, you know, and, and, and I'm a salesperson, so I get it. Like there's nothing, <laughs> I'm not dissing them at all, but you're asking a salesperson to be a project manager, it's a recipe for disaster, right? So you, there's gotta be somebody who takes ownership of these things and um, is able to iterate on the success or failure of the sales development team. And a lot of times the manager, you know, is ill-equipped to do that. So. No, absolutely. And I think, uh, and I think that's where, you know, there needs to be a little bit more focus on, on figuring out good processes and processes that work to make things more efficient, obviously not process for process, process sake. But I think the other thing is that uh, sometimes is over, sometimes is overlooked is you know we live in such a dynamic world now business is dynamic customer habits are changing all of that, and so whatever processes you do have you have to constantly look at them as you said and almost be a b testing them or constantly uh, making sure that they're optimized or. Uh, that they're not, you know, they're not obsolete because I see a lot of companies like they'll have processes and processes be from years ago and they just don't want to have to redo them. So they just stick with outdated processes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. I mean, and, and, you know, when new people come through the organization or even if they have consultants come in, you get a fresh pair of eyes and all of a sudden it's, it's, there's glaring, you know, issues that nobody's seen because it's just a, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? You know, and if somebody new comes in and looks at it, it's it's like this Rube Goldberg machine that's barely sort of hanging, hanging together with duct tape and things like that. So it's important to have a fresh pair of eyes on it. And, and if it's, uh, if there are improvements, you know, the other thing is that a lot of the repetitive activity and we, we, we kind of try to make SDRs into robots, you know, and, and mm -hmm. just have them, pressing buttons all day and, and doing automated things. And the truth is that robots are a lot better at being robots than human. So if, if we can get a good process together where a lot of the repetitious, you know, uh, behavior is automated, then we can bring out more of the human creativity that's going to be able to run those experiments and find out what's working in the market. Um, and so, the, you know, it, it's get a fresh pair of eyes, you know, look at your process right now. And if there's ways that it can be improved, um, you know, I would definitely encourage people to do that. Yeah. And I like what you just said there about the, uh, the human creativity, because yeah, I, uh, you know, we built in an automation engine into, into pipeline or CRM, uh, because for that particular reason is to get rid of all those routine and rote and repetitive tasks to allow salespeople and SDRs and everybody to focus on high value activities. And I think that's exactly that's the that's the approach people should be taking, especially when you're doing digital transformation or automation. Is look at look at the low hanging fruit, look at the stuff that's bringing no value but sucking up time from your salespeople, and especially like SDRs, because as you said earlier, the good ones you want them to be well researched, you want them to be A/B testing their messages, you want them to be having conversations, you don't want them to be doing data entry or any of these other repetitive tasks. You want it to be a creative position. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think that that's the value that humans bring now, right? I mean, we are, <laughs> we can still <laughs> add value some some way in the tech stack. And, and it's it's by uh, contextualizing and, and um, creating messaging that, that resonates 
you know, with the buyer and, and really becoming an expert. We, we, we really encourage SDRs to uh, look out into the marketplace that they're calling on and, and become an expert, a mini expert, you know, as best that you can in the industry and the vocabulary and the people, you know, that are in the, in the marketplace, um, you know, and, and, uh, and use that knowledge, you know, not only to create fresh messaging and, and try new experiments, but, but also looking out into your career if you become an account executive, if you become a marketer, you're going to need that knowledge of the of the industry anyway. So so instead of just rote repetitious behavior, you know, automate that and spend your time, you know, really becoming an expert in the marketplace. Um, so. Yeah, no, I think that's I I, I love that because I think that's uh, great advice because I also think like business acumen, understanding the business of your buyer, all of that stuff is is critically important. And as we said, yeah. if you're now uh, getting rid of a lot of the routine tasks and stuff, you know you're better equipped to be able to, or you have more time, more time to do that. Um, yeah. So let's just let's just briefly talk about technology because. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we definitely have seen, and we saw, you know, very much almost pre-pandemic in many ways, that as you said earlier, like companies are just throwing technology at everything, and trying to have like, I mean, it's and unfortunately, it also trained salespeople over the last, you know, however many years, you know, with with all the emphasis on inbound and all of that, to sort of sit back and wait. And think that technology is going to deliver everything to you, and it's going to deliver everything to you. And I think people have had a rude awakening to realize that that's not the case. That they still have to. There's a human. There's a human element that needs to be there, and there's a hard work element that still needs to be there. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it, it, there's no silver bullet. Uh, <laughs> I wish I was yeah. a silver bullet salesman. Yeah. Oh I'd yeah. Although, right although, I, although there's there's plenty there's plenty yeah. of solutions out there that pretty much claim to be silver bullets. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would I would look at those with a grain of salt, and yeah. you know, it kind of I would take it back to you know, wipe out the whiteboard. You know, write out your process. Maybe sit with your SDRs or um, AEs for a day. And just kind of do a ride along and, and see where um, you know they're they're either getting bogged down in, in technology or uh, maybe a, a piece of technology could potentially help them. Yeah. Um, but it's it it has swung like I said that there's an art and science to sales and it's kind of swung over to the science you know point uh, to you know to so much with all the technology that we kind of forgot about the the art of it and, and the creativity and the persuasion and all those old school, you know, sales techniques and stuff like that. It's kind of gotten uh, put to the yeah. wayside, it seems. And, and to be perfectly honest, I mean, if there's one thing that uh, the pandemic taught us is that there is a real hunger for human connection again. Yeah. Um, not that maybe it didn't, maybe it, it, maybe it was probably always there, but, you know, tech, being a bit overwhelmed by technology. But my advice is also, as always is like, you know, I mean, pick one or two technologies, like, you know, start with the, obviously you would say start with your CRM, but, but pick one or two piece of technology and make them work for you instead of this like layering on more and more technology thinking that it's going to solve problems it's if you haven't even gotten proper usage or you don't have proper processes for your existing technologies adding more is just adding noise yeah exactly i mean it, it just compounds the complexity you know yeah. and uh, confuses everybody and especially you know there used to be an old saying that that it takes one person to really screw up but to uh, screw up exponentially you involve a computer you know and 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 i see that happening and and it's like if you tear down the base tech stack you you just you have to have a crm you know obviously and you probably know of a good one um and then some kind of sales engagement platform just to keep the sdrs on track and so that they know you know where where they are in the process and then data you know you've got to have good clean uh, you know, data for, for them to call on. I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, <laughs> really to, to get started, you know, and then some, and then the, the, somebody to pay attention to the SDR program and, and um, be running those, those tests and training them and coaching them and stuff like that. It's as simple as that. So even if you're just, 
um, starting the company and there's a founder and you just need some pipeline, really, that's all you need. And then you yeah. can build it up from there. No, a hundred percent. And like you said, I mean, somebody who's paying attention to the SDR, somebody who's running that group, somebody who is, uh, and so, so the SDRs themselves feel important, right? I mean, getting back to where we started today, it's, it's, it's an extremely important job, but it often doesn't get the, doesn't get the attention or kudos it deserves. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, uh, and it's a great opportunity for people, you know, to, to break into the tech industry. If you're, if you're just uh, scrappy and, you know, you, you uh, are doing something else, but you're great at sales and you love sales and you want to get into the tech industry, it creates awesome opportunities. So we're bullish. I mean, we've been focusing on this for, for five years exclusively. And, and um, you know, we, we think that the, 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 the function and the career and and everything about it has a lot of legs and and it'll keep going um and uh, it just needs help and you know uh, a more of a thought process put into it to make it successful yeah absolutely well listen david it's been fantastic the book is called the sales development framework how to build and scale a highly productive sales development program and the company is 10 band so all of David's information and the links to the book and the company will all be below this video. But before we go, David, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Yeah, absolutely. So we were kind of the industry hub for the SDR world. So there's research, there's content, survey results, you know, anything you need to learn and grow in this area and put your team together. And, uh, and we do conferences as well. So we've got a virtual conference coming up here at the end of the summer. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be back in San Francisco with the Sales Development Conference in October. So hope to see everybody there. Yeah, listen, fantastic. And like I said, I would uh, I would encourage people to go out and check 10band.com, check the work that David's doing. Uh, you should cherish your SDRs. And if you've got a good one, to be honest, you should wrap them in cotton wool and like treat them really well because they are, they are golden. <laughs> um, well, listen, thanks again, David. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all again soon.